What's the number one request we get here at the Bond Experience as far as a vlog to highlight? It's the Armani jacket that Screen used from Casino Royale, so guess what? We're doing it today. David Zeritsky for the Bond Experience. Welcome back. I know many of you have been asking, what is the number one request that we get? Is it more shaving? Hell no. Is it uh, more about accessories? Eh, not really. Is it more about you, David? Oh, no, 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 no. Trust me, it's not. It's actually, David, could you please talk about that screen used Armani jacket? There seems to be some articles about that, a couple highlights in other shows, but nothing dedicated to the jacket. So folks, give them what they want. Didn't Carver say something like that? We're doing it. We're talking about the Armani jacket from Casino Royale. So let's talk about the jacket itself. Casino Royale 2006, Lindy Hemming is the costume designer. And you, most of you know the story, I think. But for those of you that don't, they wanted to give Bond kind of a rough and tumble look when he leaves uh, the Bahamas for a couple of different scenes. Obviously, the body world scene, um, the taxi scene, the airport scene, which is really, it's an amazing chase and crescendo scene. You didn't think anything could get better than the, the free running, but sure enough, there it is. So they wanted to give Bond this kind of classic rugged look. Well, they saw this Armani jacket and agreed this was it, but it was $4,000. So they got in touch with Armani. They needed to get quite a few of them, probably anywhere from 26 to 32 of these. They were gonna be in a lot of shots, a lot of stunt people, a lot of action shots. And because of that, they were gonna destroy a lot of them. By the way, when you think about action shots, I mentioned stunt people and actors. Oh no, even dummies wore this. Take a look at this picture. Yeah, that is a real production picture of a dummy wearing one of these Armani jackets when it was on top of the tanker. I couldn't, couldn't make this stuff up. It's the, the real stuff is actually more interesting than fiction. But Armani was so taken with the fact of being in a Bond film, especially with one of their pieces, that sure enough, they wound up giving them the jackets for $400 a piece. Now these things are worth an incredible amount of money. They're rarer than here comes the quote, hen's teeth. Um, never mind screen use. With screen use, they've actually made some changes. Let's talk about those right now. So we're gonna get close. You're gonna lose my face or you'll probably be happy. Um, from a screen use standpoint, they made some changes to uh, the hems here, right? To the, to the wrists and the sleeves. Um, with Daniel Craig, they brought it also closer to the body. So they actually brought it a little bit tighter. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna zip this up. Now you don't see this zipped up, but you can see that it's extremely cropped. In fact, my Sunspell t-shirt, Sunspell, PO, I'm going for accuracy. Hold on a second, Prada belt, nuts. Uh, not the Ted Bakers, but these are the Royal Filmware ones, so I quite like them. Anyway, I digress as usual. Um, it fits really well. It fits really close to the body. You can see here, if he ever kind of had zipped it up, it would have looked really good. Let's show you the back as usual. You can see here, it's a beautifully, beautifully tailored piece, okay? What I loved about it is, yes, they brought the body in, but take a look at these pockets. These pockets are incredibly slouchy. They slouch down. It's very unusual. I mean, think about it. You've got basically four pockets here, which is a little strange. Um, why don't we take a look at this in close-up detail? All right, this is a better, much better angle to show you some close-ups. Um, you've got the, the pockets right there, and you can see they're, they're kind of pleated, they're kind of slouched over a little bit. Very, very cool. Um, you can kind of get a, a nice gander there. And of the inside, it's this really nice, very soft napped cotton inside, which really shows it beautifully. Let's take a look at that inside for a second. We've got the tags, which we're gonna uh, discuss in a moment. Um, maybe you can see one there. We'll, we'll, give you, we'll give you a better view. Oh, that's actually not a bad shot at all of the tag itself. And then this is the tag that actually says what it's made out of. On this side, you've got a pocket, you've got an inside pocket, and you've got an inside pocket there. But 
Very few people have seen the inside of this, so we figured we'd give you a shot. By the way, this size, that you can see the way it fits me, is a size 50. So it has been adjusted um, because a lot of the screen use ones were taken in, and we talked about uh, the sleeve. Um, and we talked about some of the other detail. This has been altered from something that you would have bought off of the peg. But as you can see, it's relatively cropped. You wouldn't normally see a jacket like this nowadays, but there is some of the details. And the buttons themselves are relatively plain, except for it's got sort of that um, Armani type of logo hankering on the front of it. So you can see with that close up, I mean, the details are pretty amazing. Let's go inside this puppy. So if we come up here, you're gonna see that this does obviously have a pocket um, and we are going to take this off altogether because we're gonna show you some stuff that you would never see in a screen use piece, like the inside, okay? So here we have the label itself. But here's where the fun begins. When you go right over here to the tags, and this is gonna be a miracle if this shows up, but this tag, I don't know if you can see it with this lighting, my apologies, it's probably really bad. It's got a lot of the details on it, but this black tag tells you what it's made out of. Folks, it's not calfskin, okay, like a lot of people have thought. It is lamb. And when I tell you it's the softest lamb, this lamb was sure to go. Um, it is so incredibly soft. Maybe you can see when I'm crumpling it, it really doesn't make a sound. It is so soft, I could probably ball this into my pocket. Not that I would, but you could. It is unbelievably soft. Here is that knitted top. You can see some of the texture in there. And again, very unique. I mean, think about this. I'm gonna throw this on again, just so you can see some of the detail, but take a look at the collar, the way it kind of stands up and then slouches over in the front. That's exactly the way it looks in the movie. It's crazy, but that's exactly the way it looks in the movie. Um, I wanna show you something, and gosh, I hope this turns out okay. This, like I mentioned to you, is screen used. There are actual, maybe you can see it there. There are stains on this. All right, now this could be water stains. It could be that this jacket was used in a particular scene in the airport where he already had water on him, so maybe they treated it with an oil because they do that. They, uh, they use this oil substance. It's almost like a, a cooking oil um, on clothing to make things look wet. They did the same thing with Mr. Slate in Quantum of Solace to make him look like he's sweating all the time. That clothing, that screen used clothing on Mr. Slate, Slate has um, armpit stains that are permanent. It's just oil. It's not actually wet all the time. So maybe they did that because my jacket has what looks to be water stains. I don't know if they're real or if they're manufactured. They're cool nonetheless, but it does give it that obvious screen use vibe, which obviously I like. Um, some of the other aspects of this that I really like that I think people kind of gear to is it's not only become an iconic look, it's Craig's first foray as Bond. So any of those types of pieces that, that really emulate and show Bond in Casino Royale, which I don't know, is anybody going to argue that that's the best Daniel Craig movie yet? I mean, we haven't seen Bond 25. Have we? No. I don't know. I guess it depends on when you're watching this. But it's definitely the best Bond movie. So to be able to capture a screen use piece obviously makes me very happy. Now, um, indelicate questions. Uh, I get a lot of questions around this of how much is this worth? Um, would you ever sell it? Can I buy it from you? Um, so it's, it's not gentlemanly to talk about what it's worth, but if you watch previous videos, something from uh, a long time ago, and maybe we'll put up the link here, you can see what a professional says it's worth, and it's only as worth as much as somebody will buy, so keep that in mind. Um, would I ever sell it? No, I'm sorry, no. And can you buy it? Well, refer to number two, no, sorry. Um, but I do love it, and I know a few of you own um, this particular jacket, perhaps not screen use, I think one other person or two other people do actually, wow. Um, but it's, it's one of those pieces in my collection that's really iconic. I, I love the feel, I love the look of it. If you ever uh, tour the Zeritsky archive, you can 
come and um, I've let a few people try it on. They're about the right body type that aren't going to split any seams, but it's a lot of fun. Anyway, you've asked for this. You got it. David Zritsky for the Bond Experience and the Romani Jacket, like it's its own entity. We'll talk to you very soon. Take care. Oh, hey, you're still here. Hi. Didn't even know. Uh, you listen, while you're here, uh, if you want, I, I, so I would actually go to this button right here and click on it because then you actually subscribe to our vlogs. It's amazing. Um, you get to see all the upcoming stuff first. You get notifications. It screams at you while you're at work. It's absolutely amazing. Just click on this button, hit subscribe, just move your cursor, move.